I want to give you a little extra demonstration on magnetic damping. Here we have an aluminum wheel, which is free to spin. It's been painted so you can see it a little better. And it has nice ball bearings here, so it spins quite freely. And if I get a nice big neodymium magnet and bring that up, you can see very strong magnet. I can bring that up to my conducting aluminum disc and cause it to stop. I let the wheel go, and I can stop it. And I don't have to touch the wheel, I just bring the magnet up close. And what is happening there is that when I bring the magnet up next to the aluminum, which is an electrical conductor, the uh, currents are set up in the aluminum, which oppose the change that the disc is seeing. Each little piece of the disc is seeing a changing magnetic field as it gets near the magnet, and it's going to oppose that change. What it does is it sets up a little current, which sets up its own little magnetic field, which is actually pulling back towards the magnet, just slowing down the disc. So we hit the disc moving, we can slow it down. Now in this process, the energy that was in the spinning wheel has been turned into heat inside the wheel. All right, now you also know that uh, if I have a disc spinning in this direction, and I bring a magnet up to it and it stops, there must have been a force on the disc in the opposite direction. From Newton's third law, we know that when two bodies interact, there's an equal and opposite force on the other body. So there must have been a force on the magnet going in this direction. Now this is a fairly big and heavy magnet, and so you don't really see the consequences of that force. But let me get a smaller magnet, which is easier to move, and we can see what happens. So here I have two smaller magnets on a piece of steel rod, and this is free to rotate. And if I bring that up next to my aluminum and give it a spin, let's see what happens, see what this viscous force does. In fact, it makes the magnet spin. Much like the friction between your car wheels and the road makes your wheels spin, this magnetic force is making this spin. Now we can imagine we could do something with this, so maybe hook up some gears to it or make it do some work and have some nice little kind of interesting motor here where we have no contact between the spinning wheel and the spinning magnet. I have here a coil hooked up to an oscilloscope and just remind you that if I have a spinning magnet inside of a coil, I will get an electrical signal. If I spin the magnet, put it inside the coil, and you can see on the oscilloscope that I'm getting quite a large signal from this. And this gives you an idea. Maybe we can connect all these things together, and from that we can get a little signal. So now if we put the coil up here, put our little spinning magnets inside next to, but not touching, this rotating aluminum, we should be able then to get a signal from this. So the aluminum wheel is spinning. It's causing this other magnet to spin without touching it. This magnet inside the coil is causing this electrical signal to be induced in the coil, again, without touching it. And we could then use that signal to do something interesting. 